Ali Sodingo. Permit me also to recognize the Chair of the Governing Council of this University, Dr. Linda Musumba, and members of the Governing Council. Permit me also to recognize uh, the Chair of the Board of Trustees, my Lord, Dr. Bishop Mwai Abiero, and members of the Trustees. Permit me also to recognize the Vice Chancellor of this university, Professor Atieno Ndede Amadi, and he and her husband, Mr. Mike Amadi, all the way from Arlington, Texas, in the United States of America. Permit me also to recognize the founding vice chancellor of this university and vice chancellor Emer emeritus. Professor Dan Winokasete. Permit me also to recognize all the academics here present and graduates. It is my great pleasure to be invited to speak on this occasion and to congratulate all the graduates who are here present. And as I recognize the people, I cannot forget my very good friend retired Major Martin Madoka, all the way from Taita, the chairman of the Kenya Port Authority. Every graduation is an important occasion. And all of you who are here present who will graduate this morning, I congratulate you because it takes great effort to go through a process of training, instruction, and successful examination. It is the great writer who said that happiness is but an occasional episode in a drama of pain. I invite you to enjoy this short episode in your otherwise journey of pain and struggle. I am aware that today's graduation is pegged on the theme integrity and accountability. But yet, as we graduate today, it also gives us an opportunity to reflect on the value of education. All of us recognize that in the very early days, as a nation and as a people, we recognize that education was the only avenue that would make us realize our potential as a people. If you go through the books of history in the early days, when we were still as a people under the colonial yoke, the entire process of the struggle for self-determination was pegged on the realization that we could only achieve our goals if we gave pride of place to education. In those days, universities were very few. In this region, if you did not attend Makerere University, you had not gone to any university. The Chancellor of this university will tell you that he himself had to travel all the way to London in England to acquire his degrees. But several years down the line, times have changed and have changed dramatically. We now boast of many institutions of learning. We can now be proud that over the years we have produced young men and women who have graduated in different sectors. Several years down the line, this country has many is proud of the doctors that it has produced. This country has many is pro proud of the engineers that it has produced. It is proud of the many holders of degrees in various disciplines that it has produced. The question, therefore, that we must ask ourselves, having produced so many graduates over the years, 
have we realized our potential? And in order to determine whether we have realized our potential, we must go back 50 years ago. Because during those 50 years throughout Africa, those who had the opportunity and the privilege at once of struggling to help us attain our independence did identify our enemies in those days. The enemies identified were poverty, disease, and ignorance. And therefore, to determine whether our education has achieved those, we must ask ourselves whether Africa today has a population that is healthy. We must ask ourselves today whether the continent of Africa has a population that has been relieved and released from the chains of poverty. We must ask ourselves whether the continent has succeeded in releasing ourselves from the chains of ignorance. It is only when we can say affirmatively that those enemies have been defeated that we can declare victory and success. But you and me must agree that although we have made great efforts, we have yet to conquer those enemies. This country, as early as 1963, when she attained her political independence, was as clear as it was eloquent through her leaders of the day, that in order to achieve our desired goals, one of the things that we had to do was to train our young men and women. I know that some of you who are graduating today are not so young in terms of chronological age, but I know that you are young at heart. I also know that those of you who are graduating and are obtaining the undergraduate degrees are young, and you are being released into the Kenyan market to help us achieve the dream which we dreamt in 1960s. If my history and memory serves me well, and they normally do, I remember as early as 1965, through session of paper number 10 of that year, the economists and the political leaders of the day did agree that in order to help our economy grow in the direction that we had chosen, we had to train our young men and women in their chosen areas for purposes of nation building. Over the years, our planning circles have come and gone, and we have always rededicated ourselves to those goals whenever we have fallen short of our realization of the targets. Indeed, it is in that context that we must understand Vision 2030. Vision 2030 is a declaration by this country that by that year, Kenya, like all African countries, will be a middle-level economy on the anchors of the economy, on the anchors of pol politics with hygiene, and on the anchors of our social enterprise and upon the foundation stone of ethical conduct which are enshrined in our constitution of the year 2010. We also rem remember that we are not only an island country, we also remember that we are part of the African continent. And we recognize therefore that our agenda must be in tandem with Africa's declared agenda of Agenda 2063. Agenda 2063, which was the unanimous decision of African nations in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, in the year 2013, recognizes that this continent may have lost the first, first 50 years of the attainment of political independence, and that if that be the case, this generation must not lose the next 50 years. It may very well be true that 50 years ago, in a manner of speaking, we came out of the Egypt of colonization and that we have wandered in the desert for too long, for more than 60 years. 
And therefore it behooves all of us who are citizens of Africa to pay homage to the declaration that is so clearly enshrined in Agenda 2063. But we are not only part of Africa, we are also part of the world. The world several years ago in New York, in the United States, set for us up what was then described as the Millennium Development Goals. And under the Millennium Development Goals, we as a people did recognize that we had eight enemies which we had to conquer. Fifteen years after the declaration and the recognition of the Millennium Development Goals, we did not achieve our goals. And we have now rechristened those goals as the Sustainable Development Goals. We therefore are here today in order to rededicate ourselves to Vision 2030 as a country, to Agenda 2063 as a continent, and to the Sustainable Development Goals as a people. The question must we, that we must therefore ask today is the contribution that you who are graduating today are going to make. Today, over 100 of you will be graduating. Today, over 160 of you will be joining the labor market. Today, you will be joining millions of young Africans. You will be joining millions of young men and women in the world to contribute towards the growth of the economy, not only of your countries, but, on, but also of the continent of Africa. So that today we can say without fear of contradiction that we have no shortage of graduates, but we have a shortage of graduates who think differently. We have a shortage of graduates who are wedded to the sometimes unwritten and unalterable prescriptions of integrity. We have a shortage of graduates who believe that honesty is the way. We have a shortage of graduates who believe that the things that require effort demand of us that we must make effort. We have a shortage of graduates who believe that the safety of this country and this no continent not only requires, but demands that we must ask ourselves basic questions. That is, what can we do to make our country great? So today, the question that I pose to you, dressed as you are, you have the permission and indeed the luxury of celebrating this day. But beyond the celebration, the question that you must ask, what contribution are you going to make to your countries and to your economy? As a young man, I was told a story that I'll share with you. The story of a young man who in his early days, as is the trend of very many young men and women, assumed that he was a gift to the world. And therefore, in his twenties, he went yonder into the world, believing in that delusional state that he would change the world. But time and tide waits for no man. At age 30, this young man was an African. He took the view that if he could not change the world, he would change Africa from Addis Ababa to Dhaka, from Cape Town to Cairo, and time and tide waits for no man. He was a Kenyan, and at age 40, having failed to change Africa, he came back and he believed that he would change Kenya, and time and tide waits for no man. When he had failed to change Kenya at age 50, he was from Kisumu, he took the view that he would change Kisumu, and time and tide waits for no man. And he discovered that he could not change Kisumu, and when he discovered that he was age 70, he realized that the only thing that he ought to have changed was himself. Today I tell you 
that the battle must start with yourself. If you change yourself, then you can change the world. And that is why in this university that also recognizes God as an important aspect in its agenda, that is how I understand the words of Christ. That if the salt loses its saltiness, then what is it good for other than to be trampled underfoot? So today, it is not ours to delay your joy of graduation for too long. Our duty is only to remind you that there is a world out there. Remember that you have graduated from Great Lakes University of Kisumu, but you are not competing with the people of Kisumu. Remember that today that there are many graduating in different parts of the world. Do not compete with Kenyans only. Compete with your fellow Africans and do not limit to Africa. Compete with the Asians who are graduating today. Compete with those who are graduating in the United States of America. Compete with those who are graduating in Europe. Remember that until the day that we as Africans exercise the ghost of low self-esteem, we will never realize our potential. So go out into the world. Go out into the world because the world today wants to be amazed at the things that you can do. The world today wants to be amazed by the things that you can do with integrity. There is a deficit of integrity in the world. So go out there. If you have a grad degree in commerce, go out there and prove to the world that until you were born, there was never a graduate like yourself. Go out into the world, those of you who are studying nursing, go out into the world and prove to the world that until you are born, there were never graduates of your pre pedigree. Those of you who are graduating with your doctorates, go out into the world and demonstrate to the world that the world will never be the same again after your graduation. Go out there. Go out there and amaze the world. God bless you. Go out into the world and demonstrate that you made it from Great Lakes University.